10 things that can improve your business. And this is normally for people that have not really invested any time online. It's still extremely common. Um, but you'll be surprised how much extra business you get just by doing these little things. And you may have to invest maybe a day or two days into this because you're gonna have to watch separate tutorials or work it out for yourself. But each one of these will give you a bigger presence online. Uh, the first thing is with Google Maps. Google Maps has these locations on there. You, you, if you look yourself, go on Google Maps and then look for a restaurant near you. You can tap in restaurant nearby and it will give you the different locations. In the same way, if you need a mechanic, an accountant, whatever it is. But the thing that a lot of people aren't aware of is you can actually put your business on there for free. You can actually register. If you don't know how to do it and want me to do it, I can do it for you. But the point is, it's there, it's free, and obviously it's in Google Maps. So when somebody's searching for a mechanic or whatever, it's going to show that you're within 50 feet, 50 meters, whatever. So that that's one one easy way of getting uh, your business um, more noticed because uh, it gets you on the internet. Obviously, you tie that with a Google Plus account. Now, Google loves its Google Plus because it, it wanted Google Plus to, well, it still does, wants it to beat Facebook because uh, obviously Google loses a lot of money to Facebook um, because it's main rival because obviously a lot of people don't even bother with Google for a lot of stuff during the day because they're, they're looking on Facebook for little updates and things like that. They're not really motivated in the sense of meeting Google something. So that's why Google Plus is a big thing for Google. But the thing with Google Plus, it's also a free account. So you set it up with your business, you set it up with the information related to your business, how it finds you, what you're about, get some photos on there. Some little video clips are very useful. Because say you're a mechanic, you want to show the, the, you know, the garage, what you're looking at. Um, you could do like, oh, we're doing a brake change or something, you know, just so people get a feel for you. All those things are very, very useful for um, marketing your business. Now, the same goes for Facebook. Facebook sets up Facebook pages. Now, a page can be a business, it can be an organization, it can be a person, it can be a location. But the thing is, I've done several in the matter because the people that are owning the restaurants, for example, most of them are not computer savvy in the slightest. Um, so what I find is giving them a Facebook page and getting them on TripAdvisor and stuff has a very positive effect for them. Um, but also, it's all completely free. This doesn't cost anybody anything. But the thing with the Facebook and things, a lot of the time the business doesn't need to be engaged all day, every day. It's like set it up. There we are. There's our menu for this month, this year, whatever. And here's some photos of the restaurants. And a lot of the time, that's enough for the business because people search restaurant the matter or Chinese restaurant the matter, Indian restaurant the matter, and it comes up because you you choose those very generic names. Um, or you could actually go down the route of a specific like company name. But the point is, it works. So get get yourself on Facebook. YouTube's the same. Like I was saying earlier about creating some videos. Well, the thing is you create the videos on YouTube, then you link it back through your Facebook, you link it back through your Google+, Plus, you have to link it back through um, your LinkedIn account, which we'll get onto next. But the whole point is you create a presence everywhere you can, and all these are free. The YouTube stuff, like I said, doesn't need to be difficult. It could be simply videoing something you're doing. If you're a window installer, do some, do some um, photographs and put them together as a slideshow. Even that shows the transition from before, during, and after. And a lot of time, that's enough. You know, a lot of people just want an idea of, about your business. And most people ain't doing this stuff. So the whole point is, even with these small steps, you're not going full throttle with 3D photography and you know, trying to make something out of nothing. Um, you're actually just producing something saying, well, this is what we do, this is what it used to look like, and this is what it looks like. That's it. And it works. 
This one is LinkedIn. A lot of people aren't aware that LinkedIn has business pages as well as personal pages. The business pages are very, very useful, depending on your type of business um, and who you're marketing to. But most of the time, getting a presence there on some form will work to your benefit because people do internal searches in LinkedIn looking for specific things. For example, I do a lot of asset surveying. So I get people headhunting and stuff on a weekly basis because they find me in LinkedIn. It works really, really well. It's the biggest uh, business network on the planet. Next one is Blogspot and WordPress. They're both blogs. But imagine you're just setting up a website. Just keep it simple, 10, 15 pages. I know people say, well, you should keep updates all the time and all sort of thing. I don't think it really matters. If you're a small, small business, unless you're trying to um, pitch your sales on a regular basis, it doesn't really matter. Um, the reason being is that you're mainly letting people know you're there. But if you were, say, selling a widget and you say, right, I need to sell a million widgets, I need to be in the number one spot in Google Plus, blah, blah, then uh, Google search, etc., then I would agree with you. But you may find that you're the only garage, plumber, mechanic, whatever, in your town anyway, this advertising. So you don't need to be fighting for the number one spot because you've already won it because they ain't doing anything. Um, but you're going in from multiple angles. In the Google search, you're showing for video for YouTube. You're showing the Google Plus account. You're showing your Google Maps. You're showing your um, Facebook page. They're all interlinked. And that's the key to this is keeping them, you know, getting as many things in as possible. Um, Zopim is another thing. Zopim. Z-O-P-I-M is basically a live chat. It goes through to your mobile phone. So when somebody is on your website, they can actually chat and it comes out on your mobile. This is useful for people if you're doing, say, real estate overseas. Because when you are doing it, they may not speak English. So they can send it to you. You can Google Translate and then send the message back in whatever language it is. Very easy, which is much more useful than the telephone. But also, from an internet point of view, they may not have your telephone number. But there you are, in the corner of the website, right at the bottom, going, here I am, you can chat to me live. And it comes through on your phone saying, oh, I am uh, I have a problem with my car, can you have a look at it? You say, yeah, I can come over tomorrow, whatever. You know, whatever your business is. But the whole point is, it's an extra thing. It's all about customer service. The next one is being proactive in answering questions. This one is quite a useful one for things like LinkedIn. There's a lot of people asking a lot of questions all the time. And it also works on the Facebook page. It works on Twitter. Um, basically, you're getting people to ask you about your specific niche. Now, I'm not talking to people asking you for a quote on something. But they may turn around and say, oh, you sell rubber ducks. Um, how long does a rubber duck last until I need to buy a new one? And you go, know, well, the average rubber duck lasts one to five years, but we, we do know some that lasted seven, you know, something like that. Um, but we do recommend you change them every three years. Those sort of things are useful for people because they're going, oh, okay, I'm speaking to somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. He's engaged with me and spoke to me about it. Um, I'm going to buy one of them because they actually know what they're talking about. They, those sort of things, those relationships are extremely important in business. And I know we're talking rubber ducks on this one. It could be compliance relating to fire safety. It could be um, how to fly a plane or it could be absolutely anything. This is the point. You know, if somebody says my gearbox has a vibration in it, you say, well, what does it sound like? What sort of noise is it? And you, they're just after a little bit of help to find out if it's serious or not. But you could actually then say, well, if you bring it on Tuesday, I'll have a quick look at it. Um, and we'll see where we take it from there. I won't charge you for having a quick look. But going forward from that, if it, if it needs something uh, serious or even minor, I can give you the price. Because once I've seen and heard it myself, I can give you an idea of what what we're looking at. 
So those sort of things are important. You can do that on your Twitter account, you can do that on your uh, Google Plus, uh, Facebook page, um, and that is basically a Q&A where people can ask lots of questions because it creates lots of little bits of traffic on the internet, all good for a business. Now the next thing is, is engaging with people from a similar background in business. This helps both of you, or five of you, or ten of you, how many of the businesses that are similar, because it's a bit like here in Spain. I've got a friend who does real estate in Torveja. I've got a friend who does um, real estate in Pilar. I've got a friend further north, Alicante, does real estate. They're all real estate agents, and they're all in the same region. But when they cross match with each other, they help each other. Because what happens is the one in Alicante doesn't know much about the properties down in Pilar. So if they get somebody say, you know what, this is a bit noisy next to Benidorm or whatever, can, have you got anything further south? And they go, yeah, I've got a couple of people further south of us. I'll put you in touch with them. Now, they do have arrangements with each other. Let's put it this way, they don't do it for free. Um, but it's to their benefit because they send people north and they send them south. They, they work together as a group. But also, if you have these little online areas, like I said, where you queue questions and answers, they can engage as well. It's for everybody's benefit because having multiple people doing it makes it more active. And the more active it is, the more you're, it gets found on the internet because more people get more things answered, more people ask more questions, and as such, it goes up the Google rankings quite well. That's why it's important to interlink with other similar businesses ideally not your uh, competitor um, but people that you can work with but you can also have things of a similar service for example if you do car repairs um, you may have an overlap with people that do car rentals because obviously sometimes people rent cars because their cars broke down the same as vehicle recovery could be part of that um, car sales there could be interlinks between you all because you all have something to offer the other. So it's, it's worth having a think about. Be associated with your brand. Now this is an important one, and you see a lot of people don't do this. They have a little logo on a website. It doesn't sell the person. Um, because a lot, of, a lot of stuff I do, it's about the people. Um, I engage with a lot of people personally, because they're not hiding behind a little logo or anything. Because if they're hiding behind that logo, it doesn't tell me that they're doing a good service. It doesn't tell me that they um, see the business as part of them. Um, as such, I don't really like businesses like that. I like a business that has people like this. I mean, we talk, we engage, we say, look, that Matt is part of this asset company, Matt is part of this, they can see it. Now, that has a lot of benefits because when you start engaging more with people like on LinkedIn and stuff, and they can associate you with a specific company, you're developing your brand. Because what happens is, is somebody you spoke to six months ago even, um, is talking in a meeting about having a company come in and somebody mentions the company name. Now, they already know you and it's your company, so they already go, oh, I know um, Joe Bloggs from, from the, there. He's a very good. He, I had a problem with my widgets and I called him up and he sorted it. Very reliable, blah, blah, blah. That's why being tied to your brand and promoting your brand with more of a uh, personal th appearance can be very, very useful. This is something people don't do, which is what you're probably thinking, this is a long list. Spend time and money on yourself. This is your business. Spending a bit of money on your website, a bit of money on getting your graphics and all that done, um, developing all these little pages everywhere, will take two days. Um, There's an easy way of doing a lot of this stuff, um, but I'm trying to just put the points across because you get the main points, then you can go and research the bits and pieces yourself. 
And if you have any questions, you can message me. But the the point is, spend a little bit of money. It's it's your brand, it's your business, it's you. It's something that reflects your enterprise. So you investing time in getting yourself online is very, very important. You want to look professional, appear professional, and be professional. Um, so going, well, we'll throw $40 at it or whatever, ain't really going to cut the mustard. Um, you need to have a look at what you need to spend on and where. Don't go in there and go, right, this guy said he'll do my website for $1,000. I'll just give him the money and then forget about it. Don't ever do that. I'll tell you that now. You'll just waste your money. What you need to do is actually see where that money's going to be spent. Um, are they going to do your Google Plus, blah, 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 this long list of things? Because that's part of it. You want that done. Sit down and get yourself a pen and paper and go, right, what do I want out of this? Matt says do this stuff, but what, what do I want to see on the website? I want to see a logo, and I want a nice logo. I want somebody to take some photos of the office. I want somebody to take the, the photos of the front of the building. I want people to see what we do, go out onto the building site and take some good photos of the stuff so they can see what we're doing. How are we going to do this going forward? I know what, I'll give Joe a budget for a camera and every time he goes to a new building job, he does the before, during and after photos or maybe even just do some videos and then keep updating the website and stuff. So the customers can see, hey, we're good, reliable. They can see the quality of the work, but also they can see we've got ongoing projects. They, they can see that there's a consistency of work coming in and also, we don't mind people contacting us. Um, we've got nothing to a hide because this is one of the things that people do when they uh, just have a logo. Is sometimes they've got a lot of um, problems, you know, bad service or whatever. But the the point is, if you've got an image and everything else, and you're saying this is us, we're professional, we do it like this. Here's a photo of our team, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera people understand the business more and they trust it because most business is about trust. Um, so that's why you need to invest a bit of time and money in this. You need to treat this as part of your business. Um, the reason being is that a lot of people do not invest in the internet because they cannot see an instant return. But I'll tell you now, you could have 30-40% of new business from the internet. You could also have retention because doing things like this open web chat and stuff where people can get hold of you uh, even outside of office hours etc has a lot of positive stuff. The reason I like Zopum as well you see is you can switch it off. You don't. It's not like giving somebody your phone number and they're ringing you at 10 o'clock at night or something. You can go to Zopum, leave it on when you like now, I'm sitting doing this, I can leave it on in the background, it's not really bugging me, but if somebody needs me they can get hold of me. The thing is, you can look at it and go, give us a call, you know, quick message, give me a call in the morning, here's the here's my phone number for the office phone, if it's not important. But at the same time, if somebody is a new customer and they're saying, right, I want to know if you can do this or not, you want to engage with them as quick as possible. Because I'll tell you now, with the internet age, if you don't sell it to me within five minutes and I've got the internet in front of me, I'm already looking at other competitors because they'll have a better website if they've got one, um, in the sense that they will may have somebody outsourced in the Philippines or wherever, they will answer the phone. They may have a phone number that's 24 seven. But the whole point is, this way with the Zopum, you're available, but you're unavailable as well, <laughs> because obviously it's not giving them your phone number unless you, you need to, but what you have is access to you. Um, where you can actually sit there and go, okay, well, that's not really that important. Message me in the morning. Or you can go, oh, that looks like a big deal. Have you got a telephone number? I'll give you a quick call back. And then you've opened that door. Hope you found these useful. Give me a bit of feedback on it. And if you want me to do tutorials on it, how it's set up, all these different things, I can show you. Um, I'm thinking of setting up another channel for this business stuff um, because... It sort of wants to be separated out from the Philippine stuff. And I'll be honest, I want to move off the Philippine stuff, but I keep getting dragged back into it. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching.